25 years and still talking, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey everybody, it's Alex, it's the Ramble, it's from now until midnight tonight, Eastern Daylight Time from New York City. Ladies and gentlemen, that puss we're looking at, remember when your mother used to call it a puss? Sure. Yeah, yeah, puss, were, we haven't used that term in years, that's Stephen Kravitz, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> How goes wild? How you how you doing, pussy? No, I'm uh, doing really good. How about you? I'm doing fine, thank you. You got, did you go outside after we talked the last time? Well, uh, did I go out last time? No, the last time we spoke, you were loopy because you've been indoors all day. I'm still loopy because I, I I'm still loopy yes. because I've been indoors all day. Did you go outside though? Not today. I went outdoors yesterday and it didn't help. So. In the help, why not? I don't know. I'm too loopy. <laughs> yeah, that, 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 we'll take that to the bank. Yeah, we'll take that to the bank. Anyway, how you been? I've been good. I've been good. I've been good. I, I've been good. I got no complaints. You look healthy. Yeah, imagine that. Are you medicated? No. No? Oh, no, I am medicated for... Some things, but I'm not medicating, self-medicating. Oh no, no, I'm not. Not. Uh, I'm saying, are you medicated? Meaning, are they giving you medications for your illness? Illness? Are we calling it an illness? Is that what you call it? Sure, mental illness. Yeah, yeah. You've been suffering from this for a long time. Ever since I oh, knew yeah. you. Ever since I knew you. Right, right. I was diagnosed at 17. Really. Yes. Now, now it had it did it had something to do with your father, didn't it? My father and I haven't spoken forty years. Yeah, yeah, and he hasn't spoken to my brothers either. Really? That's right. So basically, you're, you're estranged from your family. No, I'm in contact with my brothers. Mm-hmm. And my uncle, one uncle. Yeah. You know, but not not with my my father, not at all. Not since he got remarried. Really? He got remarried, and what did he do? Did he ignore you, or did he... No, he made the mistake. He brought his new wife into our home, which was my mother's home. Oh. You know what I mean? Why, well, he should have sold the house, and they should have got another house separate from, from the family. Yeah, yeah. So you... Too you many memories. Say that, what? Is your mother still alive, or...? My mom passed at 47. Wow. When I was, uh, I believe, 17. A lot, all that. No wonder, no wonder you went nuts. Yeah, well, you know, I you, mean, you? you know, I mean, if people go, how can the guy be crazy? I mean, his life is so good. I mean, he's a comic and people love him and so on. No, there are things that happened to you in your past that are so hard to wash off. Bonami won't do it. You know. Right, 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 right. That's why we turn to self medication. Yeah. When you think about it, Alex, heroin saved my life. In what respect? It could have killed you. It could have killed you. Yes, it could have killed me. But what it did is it kept me from killing myself. Mm Mm-hmm. Okay. You know, because of my illness. Let me me ask you this. Uh, Like, for instance, heroin is not the most dangerous drug out there. No, not at all. The thing that makes it dangerous is the illicit sources one has to go through to get it, and you don't know the quality of what you're getting. Am I right about right. that? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. But otherwise, if you were to get a uh, legally prescribed dosage of it that was regulated, right. it probably wouldn't kill you. Right. That's what they do in England mm-hmm. instead of methadone clinics. Yeah. Methadone's terrible. Methadone is worse than heroin. Yes. There's that, a, like heroin, heroin gets into your muscles, and, and methadone gets into your bones. When you're coming off of methadone, it feels like there's bugs crawling inside your bones. Really? Yeah. 
What was the song that's not, that, not the, that I would know, Alex? Not that I would know. Not, what was the song that somebody wrote? Uh, Rockefeller selling skag, but he says it's phony. Put a needle in your arm and call it methadone. Uh, <laughs> I never heard that. Yeah, uh, that was going around for a while because really methadone was a bad idea. It was just yeah, a the terrible. Nazis invented it. Did they really? Yeah, another thing they did great, huh? Yeah, yeah. What did they invent it for, though? Because uh, a couple of the head guys, Goebel or Barrett, you know, one of the big shots was an uh, opiate addict, opioid. Uh, addict. I believe, I believe that was Gehring. Yes. Yeah. I think you're right. Yeah. Yes. So they they stopped all the uh, drugs from coming into Germany, and he couldn't get his fix, so right. to speak. So they the research, the chemists and whatnot, invented the synthetic methadone. Wow. I wonder what they're synthesizing for Trump. Anyway. Uh, yeah, no kidding. Yeah. Let's not go there. But, I, I, you know, you, you was, did you did you try methadone to clean up? Oh, yeah. No. Oh, yeah. And it was terrible, right? Yes. It was, it was worse. Yeah. Yeah. Rather than say to people, okay, look, you can't get off heroin. We'll help you maintain a decent dose. Right. You know, and save your life that way. You know, because right. I hate to say this. I mean, I, 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 I've been saying this for years on the air. But uh, the fact is that, that uh, heroin in and of itself is not a particularly dangerous drug because it is simply replacing something you already have in your system, which are endorphins. Right. And, and it comes from the word heroic. Yeah. And, and, and by the way, the... The reason why heroin becomes so addictive is because you're replacing the endorphins, and then when you get off of heroin, your endorphins don't bounce right back. It takes about a year. Right. And so sure. that's what you're craving are the endorphins that you just, you know, you killed your body's production of it because your body was going, hey, I'm getting that. Right. From right, another, right, right. I'm getting it from another source, but I'm getting it. Right. And the thing is, you know, I didn't want to be more alert. I wanted to be unalert. Right. Right. You know what I'm saying? So why don't we, if we're, I wonder if we have synthetic endorphins. I don't think so. No, I don't think so. Because if we did, if we did, you could treat heroin usage with endorphins, you know, with, with yeah. uh, synthetic endorphins, but we don't have it. So. That's a great idea, Alex. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe you should get on that right away. I'm sure they've thought of it already. I'm sure they have. And maybe they will tell you, well, the synthetic endorphins is heroin. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, uh, but the, you know, the point is that, that you went to that as a form of medication to take care of your whatever the insanity was. Right, 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 right. And that puts you in a whole different category right. of person. right. Right. Well, you know what, Alex? In the 80s, me and you could be sitting around backstage with an eight ball of Coke, mm -hmm. a bottle of Cavassier, and nobody was Oh, going wait a minute. Eye. Coke? I never did Coke. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Me neither. Yeah. But, but we could be sitting backstage doing Coke and drinking, and nobody would bat an eye. But you put this much heroin in a syringe, and you're a drug addict. Well, I, you know, I felt uh, kind of addicted to Coke for a while there, you know. And the, and only, then, the only reason I stopped is, this is going to sound strange, I moved to Florida. Well, when you move somewhere, you lose all your contacts for the drug you're using. So I figured, right. why go out and look for one? You right, know. right, right. Good for you. And as soon as I hit the Florida border, I said, I'm stopping. Now, the only reason I didn't stop is I was afraid that by stopping, it would cause all kinds of problems. And it didn't. Wow. I just stopped. You know, I had a few uh, sleepless nights, things like that, and that was about it. You right, know. you got a good night's sleep and a good meal in you, and you're pretty much done kicking. Well, I mean, the reason a lot of people didn't quit drugs like Coke and so on was because of the fear that had been instilled in them that you would have problems coming off of it. Right, right, you right, know. which is not exactly the case. So I quit Coke. You know, and then here, here, here is the thing. That, oh, that I went back to San Francisco. I got my job back. And I was holding one of those shows at the Palace of Fine Arts that I did. 
Uh-huh. And uh, it was New Year's, and there was a, I invited people back to my place, and so I bought a, a eight ball of Coke just to have there yeah. for the for the people at the party. Sure. And, and I figured, you know, I haven't done Coke in about two years, so if I do it now, it's going to be just like the first, the first time, time I ever tried it. Uh-huh. So I tried it and suddenly realized it wasn't like the first time I tried it. It just picked up where I left off. Right, exactly, exactly. And I didn't do any more. That was the last time I think I ever did coke. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. Because I said, if it's not going to give me that cheap thrill that I used to get with it, I'm sorry, I'm not going to do it. I just thought by not doing it for a couple of years, hey, I'm back to square one. I can do it all over again. I'll get that high. I'll love everybody around me, you know. Yeah, that's not quite how it works. No. It's like, say, say you were drinking one beer for a year, and you took a year off. Yeah. And then you start drinking again, you'd start at like two. And then you'd be up to three before like the, the week was done. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know? I, I, I didn't find that the next morning I wanted more Coke. You know, I, I, I see, as opposed to you, you're, you have an addictive personality. I yes, have a I self-preserving do. personality that won't let me do it. Right. Okay. Right. Does that make right. sense? So I'm in preserving myself. I just fight off the uh, the urge to uh, uh, to to want a drug. Uh, right. If I find that I'm wanting a drug too much, I stop doing it. Uh, really? So yeah, I think and I think the difference is I don't have an addictive personality. I think there's something in our DNA or whatever that makes us addictive, and other right. people not addictive. You've known people. I I, qu- I finally quit smoking one day. I stopped after 20 years. I stopped a week ago, ten days ago. Okay. I stopped yeah, well, it's a, a day at a time. You know, yeah. you're going to save a hell of a lot of money. No kidding. When I look at what cigarettes cost these days, sure, I'm going. God, I quit at the right time. Sure. How much were cigarettes when you quit? Fifty cents. I was smoking the Sherman Cigarettellos, and they were like two dollars a box. But they were fancy cigarettes, okay? Yeah, they were different colors. Normal, they? normal cigarettes were selling for, I don't know, maybe 75 cents a pack, something like that. Something like that. Now they're $12 a pack. Yeah, there you go. If you want a carton of cigarettes, you have to go rob a bank. Or you have to hit the ATM. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, it's insane how much cigarettes cost. Yes. In fact, yes. they put them in the area where no wonder there's an illegal trade in cigarettes. Oh, yeah. You know. Uh, Black market. And, and we've never learned anything about how to control addiction. The best way is like what the British do. You got somebody who's got an addiction, you supply them with the, with the, with the stuff that's state-supported right. and is controlled by the state. Uh, you, don't, right. you don't make it an illicit drug in which there's a lot of money involved in it. Right. Because right. then you bring in crime, you bring in everything, you know. Sure. I mean, when sure. you wanted heroin, you didn't exactly go to the most respected man in your community to get it. No, I did not. <laughs> I did not. And, and, you know, I'm surprised I didn't get jumped or killed. Yeah. Some of the areas I had to go visit for, you know, like when I was playing Madison Square Garden, I had to go down to the Alphabet City to cop. Oh, God. Yeah, the cab wouldn't even take me there. Just two blocks that way. Wow. Wow. Son of a bitch. Now, now I'm playing Madison Square Garden. I'm staying at a five-star hotel, New Year's Eve, and I got to go into Alphabet City because I did all my drugs on the, on a flight to, uh, to New York. I don't know if anybody knows what we're talking about when we say Alphabet City, but it's the, the streets that are known as A, B, C, D, uh, down on the Lower yeah. East Side. And I lived in Alphabet City a few years ago, but it had cleaned up. I mean, can you imagine really? going to Tompkins Square Park at, really? at, at, at any hour of the day or night? And it's fine. It's not dangerous. Really? Yeah. 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 Well, it was dangerous when I was there. And by the way, just quickly, and then we, we're, we're slowly running out of time here. Uh, do you know that on the corner of Tompkins Square Park, on the south... Uh, east corner of Tompkins Square Park, there was a bar. Okay. And that bar is where uh, 
what's his name gets killed in The Godfather. Um, remember they kill a guy in The Godfather in a bar? Right, right, yeah, right. That was the bar. That's Is where that they filmed right? it. Yep, yep. And they Is also. It's still there? It's still there. In fact, they used it recently on a show called Nick Cage that was on, uh, that was on Netflix. Yeah, it's still there. Really? It was wow, in my like it, it was in my neighborhood. Well, listen, we've run out of time. Again. Yes. So quickly. Yes. And the crowd goes wild. Oh. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Steve Kravitz. Let's talk to you in a couple of weeks, okay, Stephen? Okay. Thanks, Alex. Bye bye. Bye bye. Still talking. This is Gabnet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Okay. All righty. You know, I was just trying to write uh, somebody tomorrow. To tell them to um, uh, to, to uh, uh, be ready to call me, to, it's Stephen Pearl, uh, and he'll be our guest. Uh, maybe tomorrow. Maybe tomorrow it'll be Bubbles. We'll see. We'll see. Anyway, I'll uh, I'll send him that later. What the hell? Anyway, uh, let me see here. I got to um, I got to do something here because uh, I've got you all in, going into a waiting room. Uh, and I'm doing away with the waiting room now so that everybody can just call in and join me here as we do our little uh, um, little thing, okay? Um, as we do our little... Well, he, well, somebody is, is setting up himself. Shall we, uh, shall we look in on him setting himself up? Look at that. Look at that. Wait a minute. Aloha! Look. Let me go into gallery view. There we go. Okay. Hello there, Howard. Howard. How's it? How's it? Yeah. So that's your. Um, you have your green screen tonight. They're using the green screen, right? I am. Yeah. Yeah. You can see my junk over here, huh? Oh yeah. Right. It's <laughs> oh, here we go. Watch this. Boom. Well, you kind of got it. I, you, you're still it's still too much on the sides there you, there you go wait a minute you're getting it in slowly all right this is this is the magic ladies and gentlemen of the internet uh, and he's coming to you from Hawaii so he wants you to feel the yeah the feeling of life's like, good what life's, life's good. good yeah life's good yeah I'm feeling like crap still. You know, I don't know what it is. I, I, I think it's, I, I was talking to my friend Bubbles today, and Bubbles pretty much made me realize that it probably is, after all, allergies, because he says he's having the same problem right now. Are there allergies in, uh, in Hawaii? There are, but, you know, we really have fresh air, but still pollen's pollen. Is that what they say? Pollen's pollen. Pollen's pollen. Some yeah. people have allergies. Yeah, well, it, like my uh, my um, uh, allergies are not that terrible usually, but th this year, I've just been going through this thing where I wake up all day. I my 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 breathing's a little heavy, uh, and it's not that I'm short of breath. It's just a little heavy, and then I, the eyes are burning and everything. And this nose is dripping. Uh, uh, you know. And it won't go away. It's been going on for two weeks, three weeks. You're just not getting enough fresh air. You need to go for walks every day. Yeah, I should. Just well, 15 minutes. But where? You know? Around the block? Say hi to your friends that are living in front of your building, maybe? You know, if I lived in the country, this would be wonderful. Okay? But I don't live in the country, unfortunately. And if I lived in the country, I'd be out. Taking a walk every day. What the hell? Coronavirus can't get me out in the woods, you know. Nope. But no, on the I, beach either, I had know. to go along with my wife who loves living in this horrible city, you know. And, and you so, get good bagels? Not as good as they used to be, right. you know. I mean, I wish I could say they were as good as they used to be, but they aren't as good as they used to be. Um... I imagine in other parts of the United States you can get a pretty decent bagel. I bet you can get a good bagel in uh, in uh, where what island are you on? Maui. Maui. On Maui, you can There's get one place. It's called Westside Bagels. They sell out every day. 
I literally, if I want to get bagels, I call them before I get in my car, place my order, and then drive there. Really? See? And is it a good bagel? It's it's the best bagel on Maui. Now, you, um, you, yes, you, it's, a, you, it, you're not, it's a good bagel. You're not from New York, though, are you? I have family. My mother was born in Brooklyn. Yeah, yeah. But no, I actually grew up in San Francisco Bay Area, San yeah, Mateo. Because um, I got to tell you, I um, uh, uh, the bagels here are pretty damn good. You know, they they, you know, but uh, they every now and then somebody some interloper comes in and tries to make some money out of making bagels, and they had a thing here called bagel nosh, and you went in there and you had nothing but uh, Japanese guys making the bagels. And somehow that did not seem terribly authentic, you know? No. Hello, Phil. How are you? I'm just oh, fine. Oh, geez, thanks. almighty God. You just blew you out of the... Yeah, turn your mic down just a tad. You, you, you know. I've got to, I got to get myself one of those mics to compete with you guys. I just never cared what, about what mic I used. Well, hey, uh, Phil. Yeah. Behind yeah. you, you've got like this looks like something for target practice, a cardboard. But who's the picture in front of it? Uh, that's uh, our president, Donald. In front J. of a Trump. target practice? Uh, no, I, I stuck it back there because it was on my desk. But yeah, oh, okay. uh, yeah and he uh, needs some place to worship it. Well, I have uh, a laser <clears throat> bullet, which is for dry practice firing of a firearm. And if you glue uh, some of those reflectors onto a target like that one behind me, uh, you can place it in different spots and then practice dry firing uh, at a silhouette. Uh, that, so that somebody gave me that so I could do that. Oh, okay. Boy, uh, that was an interesting story. Well, dry fire practice will help you develop trigger control. And, well, I found that helped me with sex, actually. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Dry firing. Hello, Charlie Wallace. Hi, Alex. Let me ask you something. Have you changed your camera since we started doing all this? Nope. The same camera I've had since the very first time I ever called you. So it's, it's really Zoom or Skype or whatever that makes the cameras look better because yours yeah. looks really, really terrific, you know. I mean, yep. I've got a 4K camera here, and you're looking almost as good as that. Not quite. I can tell the difference slightly. Phil, of course, has a uh, really cheap camera, but it looks good. Which one is you uh, on one of your computers? Well, on one of my computers, but I have two of these 4Ks in here. Yeah. Yeah, because they look really nice. What? what you add that. Oh, laser, laser target. You oh. you add two 4K cameras together, you get 8K. Yes, yes. I don't know where you get that, but we'll go. Hello, Rob Alfano. How are you? Good, how are you? What are you drinking? Water. Oh, water. Okay. I'm drinking coffee. You know, this may be... I'm, it, I think part of my problem is I'm not getting hydrated enough. I tell you, it makes a difference. I'll, I'll tell you, because I think I've, I've been feeling like today I was feeling really crappy. And I, actually, I don't feel that bad right now. Once I come on the air, I suddenly, everything gets better. And I think Marjorie says I'm going through deep depression. And I think, I think I've think i got the stay-at-home depression that people are known to get from this. That this is a side effect of COVID. So, you know, what the hell. Once again, you need to go out for just 15 minutes. Get yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'm it. not depressed staying home. Uh, <laughs> I understand you can go down to Charter Street in New York City and uh, join the crowd. And, you know, it's the summer of love down there. Charter too. Street? Yeah, that's what they said. Charter Street. I, I never heard, I of, never heard of Charter Street either. Uh, Are you the, sure you, uh, you're not talking about Cha Chambers Street? Maybe it's chamber. I thought that. Yeah, maybe, maybe I. What's I what's that. happening down there? Uh, there are tons of uh, protesters that have closed down the block, and they're not letting anybody through. And it's normally a very uh, populous area. You know what? What this all is a function of people having precious little to do. <laughs> yeah. 
You know? Uh, and, and I don't mind them blocking off those streets. Go ahead. What the hell? We don't, need, we don't need them anyway. What's down there? The courthouse is down there. Eh, yeah, block them. Block them. Block uh, those I streets. think they were protesting uh, that they wanted de Blasio to cut the $1 billion from the New York City Police Department. And they said that there was going to be a vote on that uh, uh, an hour or so ago, and I hadn't heard anything on the news. Yeah, well, I don't know. I don't care. You know, well, I, 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 you know, I hate the cops. So what? Yeah. The hell? Well, next time you meet them, you can make a reservation twenty four hours in advance. And I, maybe I, I will them. because I, I called them on something the other day and they didn't do a goddamn thing about it. So you know, what do oh, I need them for? You, the only time I ever, the only time I ever called them, and said, yeah. okay, I want a little, little help here because so we got some. Uh -huh. You're complaining on the well. Poor what they did people. do, what they did do, is they opened up the park across the street to them again. So now they're all back over there again. Yeah. Well, give them time. They 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 like your neighbor. You know, they like your overhang. And, but you uh, know, here we got a police department that can't stop all these fireworks, right? Yeah. And all you got to do is have a set of ears and just follow the sound. And follow the flare-ups on the tops of roofs, and you can then bust those people, okay? Yeah, but they're not even interested in busting looters. Why would they bust them? Yeah, they, they don't bust anybody, you know. So, anyway. How's every damn thing down around your uh, neck of the woods there, Rob? Quiet. Very quiet. Very quiet. You know, I'm supposed to go to the dentist Monday for a cleaning. Yeah. And um, so I called the dentist today and I said, <clears throat> what's the procedure? Well, everybody's covered. The, the dentist has an N for whatever the hell mask plus yeah. a shield and Re wash down all the surfaces in between patients. They keep patients socially distant, see less people. Mm. And then I looked at, um, I use the dentist from near where I used to live. Yeah. Fairfax County, Virginia. I live in Frederick County, Virginia. Mm -hmm. The number one highest infection rate mm -hmm. is Fairfax County, Virginia in the state. Oh, the boy. lowest infection rate is my county, uh -huh. with only 344 people yep. in the And county. where again is your dentist? In Chantilly, Virginia, oh, in oh, Fairfax oh, okay. County. Okay, okay. It's near Fairfax. It's in Fairfax It's in county. Fairfax County. And so I'm thinking 10,000 infections, 300 infections. Yeah, yeah. I think I'm going to switch dentists and get my teeth clean here and yeah. then go back to my dentist when this is over. Hey, Tony, why don't you move your camera just down a little bit just so we can see more of your face? There we go. You know, yeah. just... I don't want to scare you, but there it is. <laughs> there it is. There they are. There's your chin for a change. Yeah. Shape. Yeah. So, um, uh, so you're just going to find another dentist? Yeah, yeah just temporarily... Mm -hmm. Just because, why do you want to do that to yourself? I, I want to get my teeth clean, but didn't not about to. I didn't agree. Alex switch to another dentist temporarily and found that he really liked her? And uh, no, I have, a, I have a I have a whole new dentist. Yeah, she uh, done all the stuff, but I was supposed to get a uh, the um, my tooth, uh, uh, you know what do you call it? Uh, uh, yeah, implant. Implant. Yeah. And uh, then COVID hit. And I don't know that I'm going down there right now, you know. Yeah. So, um, what have you? I I don't know. Go down to that street over by the courthouse. Go to the street, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, but uh, uh, you know, I mean, like I've been thinking about maybe, oh, maybe going to my my doctor to see about this, you know, just the gazorchness I've got going here. That's who knows what it is. I, last time I had almost the same thing, and I went to him, and he said. It's it's, it's allergies. Um, and that went on for about three weeks, four weeks. But I was thinking about calling him, and I just remembered that I called him a while back. And uh, uh, hello, John. Uh, and um, he, I got a message that said, yes, the doctor is seeing every, people on, on Thursdays. You know, it's like he's cut down completely. I mean, if I want to subscribe to his uh, concierge service, he'll be over to my house making a house call. But that's oh, really? 2000 bucks a year. He'll come to your house? Huh? Is it a, 
Oh, you got to pay him two thousand, but he'll come right to the house. Yeah, he'll make a house call. Is it two thousand plus uh, the call, or is it just two thousand? You get all you can eat. The what? Uh, is it two thousand just the basic? And then if you call him to come to your home, there's an additional charge. No, no, the, the, he, he charges you. I don't know. Maybe he, he also charges you for the call, but he yeah, will he will imagine. he will make himself uh, uh, incredibly available to you. Right. I mean, you could do a routine check probably in the house, though, I would imagine. Yeah. Look how fast we are. We're only 10 minutes into this, maybe, and we got nine people, including me. This is, this is uh, wonderful. Uh, but why do you always like to tell me what horrible things are happening in New York, Phil? He's hoping we should get it. I, I want to cheer you up. You want to you cheer know, me up? Yeah, at least you know... Uh, you know, he's not happy to work 16 blocks south. There's stuff going on. You wanted to get out of the house. You know, there's activities out there that you can participate. Well, in. if it's if it's something against the cops, I'd be happy to participate. Well, that that was against the you cops. know, you know, because I uh, um, um, I've never had a use for a cop. I gotta tell you, you know, until you meet him. Uh -huh. you know, I got a T-shirt that says. Uh, Next time you need a co hate cops, call a crackhead. You know, what's the logic in that, Phil? Yeah. How does that make a statement? I don't even know how to get to you. <laughs> well, crackhead will give you as much service, uh, you know, as you want yeah. until he steals your money. Yeah, I see. Yeah. Um, anyway, there's somebody on our thing today on our uh, chat called Jessa Era McMorna. Does that sound like a real name to you guys? <laughs> and he said to me, he, yeah, heroin's not dangerous. That's why junkies die, because I was talking to uh, Steve Kravitz, who at one time was a heroin addict. And we were talking, I was talking about the fact that heroin is less dangerous than, say, um, um, uh, what, what's the stuff they were giving people? To methadone. Get, methadone, <laughs> that it was less dangerous than methadone. And that's true. Uh, and uh, the only thing that makes heroin dangerous is because people are buying it off the street and it's adulterated, and that's what kills them. They don't know what the dose is. It isn't a regulated dose. If the government were supplying it uh, and, and with the proper dosage, we would have very few addicts dying of heroin overdose and very few of our television sets being stolen. <laughs> Huh? Isn't that the speed freaks that steal the TVs and well, them the too. Them just kind of lay around and watch them? Well, I don't know. If you, I've seen, I, you know, I know what heroin does to you. I, I've never done it, but I know what it does to you. And I can't imagine anybody even getting off of their couch to go steal something. But if you need more heroin and you don't have the money, maybe you need the television set so you can sell it, so you can get the money to do the heroin. But, you know, if, if for instance, uh, what did I say once? Oh, yeah, that if we legalized all drugs, in other words, we decriminalized them and made them medical problems rather than, than legal problems, uh, we would, in the end, uh, not have to have as many cops as we have now because about about a certain percentage of what the police do has to is is at least drug related in other words people stealing stuff to get money to buy drugs whatever and so we could probably get rid of about a third of the police department if we just made drugs legal you if it was legal you don't think they'd still cost money uh you know the government would put a tax on it and the, the, you know they would have to steal anyone. Well, we take, we do we, we, we do the the British model, which is the government supplies it. The British model of government supplies everything. Yeah, isn't that wonderful? No. Why, Takes Phil? Phil, what what kind of American are you that you don't like free stuff? I like free stuff. Well, you like, I like you free like stuff that I earn. Oh, that you earn? Yeah. Oh, okay. Like what free stuff you earn? Well, you you barter in some way, you know. You, no, 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 no. I'm talking free stuff. I mean, I think our government should give us lots of free stuff. Yeah, but you see, 
nobody values free stuff. Well, oh, I wouldn't value all my medical care being taken oh. care of by the federal no, government. No, it's like going to a buffet. You take oh, a more plate okay, than you yeah, need I, it, I, we wouldn't and you leave it on bullshit. the table. That's such bullshit. It's such bullshit. I value my free medical God. care. Yeah, yeah, you're the first one you to take. You're not going to value yeah. um, Medicare. He's on no, it. Me, I'm on Medicare. You don't value that. You yeah, take I it for pay granted. It's forty-four dollars to to the government, mm -hmm. and they're going to take it now out of my Social Security check. Well, well, do you not value the month. fact that you have good care now, and it costs you a little? Phil, bit. how much did it cost you per month to have Kaiser before before Medicare? Huh. Thirteen hundred. Now it's costing you one hundred and forty-four bucks. We we Plus fucking we we, which yeah. is a hundred and twenty, I think. You have an and then I have another policy for the dental and so forth. That's I think sixty. Yeah. Why is it so expensive? Thirteen hundred. Uh, because I was sixty-four, and uh, yeah. that's yeah. that's so, what. So so Phil Phil, you, you're slowly becoming a socialist. Is what you're doing. No, 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 I paid for this. I, I, well, you know, I want to hear the excuse on this one, Phil. Go ahead. Okay, 15% of my income mm -hmm. went to Social Security up to, I don't know how many thousands because it changed over the years. It was, years, a, 20, it was about 9,000 some, some odd dollars, yeah, per year. Yeah, mm -hmm. every year uh, every that year. I earned and I earned money. And I remember when I earned really good money, I paid that out in about three months. But yeah. now, but in the end, when I wasn't making good money all year long, it came out of my. Well, you, know. you you've over the years you've always earned more than me. Uh, I don't know how you did it, but <laughs> socialism, always, Phil. Socialism, huh? free stuff. Yeah. <laughs> free stuff. <clears throat> you like free stuff, don't you, Rob? Everybody likes free stuff. Not Phil. Phil does. He wants to earn his free stuff. Mm -hmm. That's, That's right. True. That's just to prove, try to prove a point. That's all that is. You know, when you you're, not gonna give up your, so, you're not going to give up Social Security. You're not going to give up the socialist programs that you're on. When your parents gave you your first car, and they, you know, and they gave me my first car. Me too. What did I go out and do? I wrecked it. You know, you were a kid. You were a baby. I know, but did I give a shit? Brains? No, because I didn't earn it. No, that's not why you did it. You did that. You'd have done it if you went out and bought it yourself because you're a kid. Anyway. When you do <laughs> dumb things well, when it, you're it, a kid. Yeah. Howard? Bought my first car and crashed it. Yeah, exactly. And I bought, and it didn't I, take I, long. I, <laughs> my, my, father, my father told me that when I got my first car, I would have to buy it. He would not buy it for me for exactly that reason. That I, wouldn't, I would respect it more if I owned it. See? Uh, that's what I'm saying. And Alex didn't get any car accidents. <laughs> and your father it. agrees with me. Oh, no, he's trying to teach him. Well, you got to earn, you know, a little lesson. The first day my father <laughs> took me out to teach me how to drive, I got in front of the back of the wheel of the car and smashed it into a telephone pole. Oh, jeez. <laughs> All right, you were learning. Yeah, but in those days, the cars didn't get a dent. The telephone pole The telephone pole, pole came down. Yeah, <laughs> right. Into the metal dashboard. Yeah. 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 Uh... Yeah, my, my, my friends have a they have a junkyard. They're all Cadillacs up in Brentwood, yeah. <clears throat> and they have all the '50s cars. And they go to the '60s. There's like 10 acres, and it just goes back from the '70s, '80s, '90s, and the 2000s. And the '50s, they have these little small dents in the fenders and stuff. And mm. then you come over to the 2000s, and like the whole front end's right now. Yeah. Wow. I've cool. been looking on eBay. And now, once you look one time, all of a sudden, other stuff comes up. So I looked at, like, 55, 56 Thunderbirds. I looked at uh, 51 Hudsons. And I looked at uh, Nash Metropolitans and a few other things. Just, But they keep coming up. And now they come up often enough that if I had a garage space for it, uh, you know, I'd be tempted to bid. You know. mm -hmm. One of these days. Oh, by the way, uh, Jezera uh, McMorna says uh, she's a woman, and the first name is Ethiopian, the last name is Irish. Used to be in the studio audience a lot. Oh, okay, fine. Well, then it's okay for you to tell me I'm full of shit. Then you, you, <laughs> you, you were a fan. Hello, Charlene. Hi. Uh, <laughs> How's everything in Jersey? Oh. A lot of road work. A lot of road they're fix, work? They're fixing roads, yeah. Really? 
son of yeah, a bitch. It's pretty boring. Yeah. You were talking about Tompkins Square Park, right, Alex? Mm hmm. They used to call it Needle Park yeah. and stuff, right? Yeah. <laughs> yep, they sure did. I remember when the homeless people got thrown out. It, it uh, when I, by the time I moved into the Lower East Side, that was a, became a very safe neighborhood. But right. I remember back years ago, my uh, th third wife, um, uh, mm -hmm. Susan, her parents, as a wedding gift, wanted to give us their apartment, which they owned. But it was on, on uh, D Street in Alphabet mm -hmm. City. Alphabet City. Uh, we said no. <laughs> we just didn't. <laughs> we, did, we, we wanted to live longer than that. So, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, it's pretty nice over there. Huh? It's pretty nice over there. Oh, it's now. very nice now. Dig. Oh, yeah, that and that apartment would be worth millions right now. If yeah, you wait long enough, everything comes around. Yeah. Well, you know, I tell you, Alphabet City was the way it was for so long that nobody ever thought it was going to come around. You know. Right. You said the same thing about the South Bronx and Harlem. Huh? You know. Um, they did. Yeah. Hmm. Nobody wanted to go above 125th Street. Well, no, Har Harlem. Harlem, oddly enough, is just gentrified in the time that we've lived here. Yeah. You know. And uh, it, it's not it's not dangerous at all anymore. Excuse me, folks. I have to wipe my nose. Ah. Uh, I've got this gazorchness and stuff. But anyway, uh, so uh, let's see here. What else is uh, what else is new? Um, we're uh, we're we went we. Uh, Went up a third in deaths in Cal in New York yesterday. We went from five people to eight. Aye. Pretty good. You know, when you consider that we had 800 deaths at the peak per day, we're 100 times less now at eight. And what are you doing wrong? We're not doing anything wrong. Well, what what we're doing right is we're keeping all you people out of the other states from coming in here. Yeah. Alex? Yeah. There was one very famous death. Did you mention it already? Yeah, I mentioned Carl Reiner yet. But, oh, okay. You know. Howard, are there any uh, bad areas of Maui? You know, areas that you'd want to stay out of? Yeah. No? Okay. You mean like scary, like like, like you can't go there. You're gonna get your ass beat. Yeah. No. No. There's a place called Happy Valley that has this reputation that you don't want to get be there after midnight because like yeah. the crazies and the hookers are out there. <laughs> but honestly, no. There is not a scary place anywhere on the island. Where is that? Near Kanapali Beach. <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe you don't want to go to Hana and not belong there. Really? Maybe. Well, you but know, other I, than that, I would say it is. It's it's so safe. There's this show called uh, that we were watching called uh, City of Angels, Penny Dreadful City of Angels on Showtime, uh, and it really was not that good. I mean, it, we kept waiting for something to happen, and it was a beautiful show, but nothing much happened. Um, and uh, but at the very end. Part of the thing was they were trying to keep a highway from coming in through the through the barrio, where the where the Mexicans lived. And um, finally, at the end, it turned out that they're going to put it in and it's going to go through anyway. And there's a whole speech that this guy gives in which he says, "You know, they're going to start building roads through every part of town. You know, over." heads for freeways and so on and and railroad tracks to come into the city and so on and what they're going to do is they're going to use those as dividing lines between where the poor live and the Mexicans and the blacks and so on live and they're going to become dividing lines and you know something that's exactly what happened you know if you think about it in all these cities what do what what we talk about oh it's on the other side of the tracks you know, well, what was on the other side of the tracks? That's where the blacks lived, right, Charlie? East Palo, East Palo Alto was like that. Yeah. Palo Alto 101, and you had you had a little loop that you had to go through to Dumbarton Bridge that was East Palo Alto. 
But then you went on that and you have multi-million dollar homes, huge homes. Yeah. So one side is the multi-million dollar homes and the other side is basically the ghetto. Yeah, that's uh, changing now. And, and so a lot of times these these freeways and stuff were used as <clears throat> ways to kind of keep populations divided from the other part of the population. Yeah. Phil disagrees, of course. You know, there, there are areas even uh, in uh, the Embarcadero when they had the earthquake in 89 mm -hmm. and the Embarcadero went down, it changed neighborhoods. Uh, you know, that, but all of San Francisco started to gentrify. It didn't really matter where it was. Even Hunter's Point has, uh, you know, million dollar condos. I remember in San Francisco when the Victorians were part of slums. Yeah, yeah. You could the buy Victorians, by the way, five thousand dollars. In case you don't know about the Victorians, these are beautiful, beautiful, stately homes. Gingerbread, gingerbread. Yeah, amazing. Ain't it, lady? Yeah. Yeah. Were those the ones that were the colored houses when I was walking around the city? N no, they're, they're painted houses, not colored houses. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, I mean, they like, 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 like purple, this, that, and stuff like that. No, but yeah. uh, they, they are different colors, yes. They're different colors, yeah, because I was walking around, I was like, well, that looks pretty cool. As opposed to colored houses. Yeah. Because yeah. I, like, yeah. I said, well, that's pretty different, you know. How they yeah. I always wonder what they look like inside. I remember those places in the hate. You could buy them for nothing because you couldn't heat them. The, elect the electrical was always uh, knob and tube that were, you know, really behind. Uh, you know, nobody wanted those. And now look how they're desired. My grandparents owned one, yeah. and then they sold it, moved to Marin County. Uh, I wish they had saved it. Yeah. <laughs> I wish I still owned it, you know. Yeah. Um, of course, John knows what we're talking about when we talk about the Victorians, right? Yeah, I, I heard a story about this guy who he was living like in a commune in one of those painted ladies back in the 60s. Mm -hmm. wow. And, and uh, you know, it was kind of like a hippie kind of a thing. And he had the opportunity to buy it. And so he talked to his dad and said, hey, dad, we should buy this thing. And uh, his dad said, are you crazy? That's the worst freaking neighborhood. But he ended up buying oh. it. And, he, and then he just finally sold it like uh, about five or six years ago for like, I don't know, like three million bucks. Yeah. But they only paid like twenty or thirty thousand for it back in the seventies. Oh, yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. You hold on to anything long enough it gets to be worth something. Yeah. You know, there was a there was Except a, if I buy it. There was a I can't remember what show it was. Uh, <laughs> uh, but it was about a, a the story was about a guy who was considered a weirdo among his friends because he was a hoarder. And what he hoarded were comic books. That's me. <laughs> yeah, Tony. <that's funny. laughs> and and oh, yeah. I think the guy the guy was played by Mark Hamill. I can't remember what show it was on. It was one of those anthology shows. And the guy um, doesn't give away any. He, he becomes an older guy. He's got a beard. He's living in the, on Skid Row. But he's got this massive collection of comic books. He takes around with him because he just will not give it away. And all of a sudden, somebody looks, he's got Action Comics number one. Mm. You know, he's got this, he's got that. They say, you're worth millions of dollars because you've got this comic collection. So you you uh, take anything. I mean, I wish I had taken everything when I, I loved when I was a kid and bought two of everything. Yeah. And didn't put one it. away and didn't open it. Yep. I did that with a lot of books. I would buy multiples and never read them. But I was when I was in, like in my early teens. Yeah, you know, but you want them and you want them to be mint, oh, right? In condition, I can pull out things that I've never read. What's the, would, What's the most valuable comic you bought a whole bunch of that you're now unloading? There was a time. Hold on a second, in, my pants in, 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 are creeping up. You're gonna me. You're gonna fall down for this. Huh. But I did buy a, a run of Spider Man for like I think it was about twenty issues straight, twenty five mm -hmm. copies of a comic of a title of yeah. the issue. Yeah. But then I was buying, and I bought hundreds of Spawn Number One, and a run of those when it, when Image first came out, the mm -hmm. publisher. Mm -hmm. And I was buying Todd McFarlane work. Whatever he did, I was buying like tons of books. Whatever he did, multiples. Over, over, over. So I was kind of like, I am kind of a, like a hoarder, Alex, like that. Like if I went to little flea markets, I would grab certain things that I was. Yeah, but looking. you, you, but you, you, you were a um, an investor. 
You know what? I was, and I never knew it. Yeah. Make a real lot of money. Yeah, order like what I was doing at the time. I just was like, I loved it so much. So, do you have the first Spawn? Oh yeah, I have. I have like 150 copies of the first Spawn. Yeah. And yeah. how much did you pay for each of those? Uh, well, I bought it from the distributor. I would say I paid maybe 90 cents a comic. Okay. And now, how much are each of those copies of Spawn getting? Well, I just sold one. I only sell them graded. So when I, I just sold a 9.8 for $175. But um, boom. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's like, I mean, and I don't want to say... You know, you can buy and sell anybody on this Citizens panel with your fucking <laughs> comic books. You know that, I don't, don't know you? How much worth. Other than Shecky, I would say. I don't know much Howard the Duck? Book. No, but he's a smart investor. I tell you the truth. Yeah, but but, 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 but Shecky, Shecky doesn't buy 100 copies of one no. print. Okay. Put it this way. I would leave people certain things. I already told my brother that if I make more, there's certain comics that I will leave people. No, but what I'm saying is, is that Shecky was a collector, but he was collecting one yeah, of this and one of those and one of those, you know. I think he did them all with his films, I think, from what I understand. What I understand. Huh? Like did his, you know they were going to be worth a lot of money? Did you just know that? that? The comic, I, if you were to I, buy how many, 90 copies of it. Yeah, I think? tell you, Rob, I never really envisioned it. I mean, at the time. I did want to, I did, I'm not going to lie, I want, when you buy 100 or 150, that was an investment. So I was rolling the dice. I said, you know what I said? And I was a big McFarlane fan. I said, you know what? I was, what do you get to? I said, I'm going to buy 150 copies of Spawn number one to number 10. Because they were, they were striking out on their own because they wanted to keep the rights of the character. So I kind of liked what they were doing because they didn't want Marvel. If he were to, if he were to really spawn for Marvel, Marvel would own the rights to a part of it. So McFarlane was shrewd at these other guys. He says, you know what? We want to keep our creation so that we have... So would you say that's the most valuable bunch you have? Oh, well, not... See, I don't... You want to laugh, guys? I don't even consider... It. I'm going to tell you the truth. I would never pay $180 for that comic book, because I'll tell you why. To me, it's not worth the money. Yeah. Print run. To me, what's worth the money is give me Giant Size X-Men number one from 1975. Mm -hmm. That's the... Because that's when they really weren't overproducing the comics. So that's the first introduction okay. of a new X-Men. Or give me Hulk 181 for the first Wolverine. And, boy, if you got multiple copies of that, you're talking about, you know, you can get five, six thousand dollars for it. Wow. One? I mean, that's not even, I mean, I, I have an 8 and a 7 but I didn't pay a lot of money for it. But you have to look for the book. That's the difference. You know, you know what Shecky taught me? Uh, I have, um, in fact, is it up here? I think it's somewhere. It's either here or, oh, there it is. It's right over there. I have my John Lennon postcard. That's Wait a minute, I mean, I'll show I'll know. show it to you. I'll show it to you guys. <laughs> you I mean that that is like priceless really. Oh yeah. I don't think I'd be able to Here's pull my with John, John Lennon. Lennon postcard. Wait a minute, let me put my earphones back on so I can hear you guys. Um here's yeah, my so John Lennon postcard. Oh, and God. first I'll show it to the audience. Well, I actually I, I, yeah, right there. I would that would go in my casket, Alex. I'll tell you the truth. <laughs> that would go that in your casket. With me, okay. I know, yeah, I what, now, it, it isn't so much that it's signed by John Lennon uh, and that it's, uh, you know, see, it took uh, uh, That's nice. John oh. Lennon and put an O at the end of it. Are you kidding me? Yeah. yeah. And then at the bottom here, there are some little drawings where he has his signature. Oh, that. You see that? That's an original drawing by John Lennon. Forget yeah, about it. that's one of his original drawings of himself, basically. Forget, it. Forget about uh, it. And uh, it, it, then it reads, Dear Alex, was it a dream or did someone hand me a, a, a phone telling me I was on the air with Alex Bennett? Jesus, I hope I was okay. I had enough shit last year. That's amazing. Right? And That's what the shit was is when he threw, remember he threw, a, he threw a, I think, a cake in the pool or something at a Hollywood party, and uh, he got into all kinds of trouble. Well, there, there is, now, how much do you figure this is worth? Uh, yeah. I wouldn't even know. I'd I say it's the most valuable thing I own. Okay. If I had a guess, it's a crazy, like, just off the top of my head, you gave that to Southersby with a, with a reserve at the time I only sell it for this? I could see somebody giving me about three hundred thousand dollars, or maybe. $200. No, I don't think so. Uh, You'd be surprised because it's but the Shecky, rich person. The, I, I had it once. Somebody estimated it at um, at about thirty thousand dollars, something like that. Something like thirty thousand. For three hundred thousand, I would part with it. <laughs> oh, listen, yeah. uh, 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 you know. 
who am I going to give it to when I go? Exactly. You know, uh, exactly. And, and everybody <laughs> says, well, how, would you sell that? And I went, sure, I sure, I, I, sure I would. I yeah, said, for the you right know, money. Well, to begin with, oh, I can't put it up on my wall because somebody might come in and steal it. So I've got also, it sitting I'm, over here. Aren't you worried about it fading and light and all that? If you right. It well, I, actually, this is in pretty, if you notice, graded for me. Uh, uh, oh, I can't know. I mean, I would. I mean, I love John Lennon and the Beatles. He only died when they, he was taken away. I'll tell you, Alex. I would, well, I know it's that's priceless. Yeah, I mean, but but I mean, if you were to if you were to grade it, that's, that's in pretty pristine condition. I have that thing framed already. It, hanging on the wall. Uh, this is for you need uh, museum it glass. It looks nice like that, though. Yeah, well, I like that museum light. glass won't, won't yellow it or. Yeah. This, well, well this, it this, helps. this is this has not been out in the light, so and I the, it, it it this is about as pristine. It almost is as pristine as the day I got it. I mean, that's and, It's what 45, 50 yeah, years really old. Uh, let me see the date on it. Let me see what the date is on it. Uh, the date is 17 March 1975. So how many years ago is that? Wow. Uh, 45. Huh? 45. This, 45 years this is 45 years old. It's amazing. Uh, I, I, I was told by Shecky that I could get maybe 25, 30,000 for it. But he said it's only worth as much as somebody is willing to pay for it. Right. Right. Yeah, and that's where the and it's most valuable to you because it's got your name on it. Yeah. And it's, that's what right? I mean. Alex, yeah. take it's a perfect. picture of it, a good quality picture, mm -hmm. and then and sell the sell the original. Take the cash. I already have pictures on it. Uh, you took a picture of it. Well, years ago, I had a picture of it. Yeah. Uh, of the postcard. Yeah. This way uh, better yet, why don't I run? Why don't I run it through a scanner and you know get a yeah, copy of it that right. way? But all I'm right. keep the original. Uh huh? <laughs> oh, sell sell the uh, sell, sell the prints. Keep the original. Yeah. But, but all I'm saying is, it's only worth what people are willing to pay for it, right? Yeah. Tony, I, I mean, if, if if I put this up for for auction and the highest bid somebody comes up with is five thousand dollars, then I guess it's only worth five thousand dollars. It just didn't get the right audience. Yeah, yeah that's, that's where you got to go to some people. Yeah. Big Tony money. knows I don't like uh, comic books and I have no interest in them. So he sent me this. This is a Trump. Well, Trump comic sells comic. like hotcakes. <laughs> I just sold the Trump for eighty dollars, Phil again. Well, I told you I'll give it back to you. If you want. I got rid of it to some dummy for eighty bucks. I, he he, he sent it to me when it was new. Like, I can't. It's worth about ten cents less than it was a week ago, Phil. Yeah. So I, you know, I, I Tony, I'll send it back to you. You can. No, sell I it. got plenty of those. I bought Do like fifteen. Does anybody here own That's something? Rip off a Hulk on you. Uh, let me let me ask. Is, does anybody here have anything comparable to something like this that you cherish that probably is worth something? That's I got a. Uh, I have, I have a first edition R. Crumb book uh, signed by Charles Bukowski and R. Crumb. Okay. That's pretty cool. Uh, 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 wait a minute. We, we, got, we got to get... Uh, um, what happened to... Tony? Tony. He, Tony. <laughs> no, Tony... Uh, listen, 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 listen to uh, John Larkin. Is he, that he has... that guy you talk about, Alex? What? Yeah, Tony, listen to John. Is that an artist? Listen, listen, John Larkin has a comic book. So let's see you grade this for him. No, it's it's actually not a comic book, it, but it's a illustrated book by R. Crumb, uh, and it's it's um, got it has Charles Bukowski's poetry, and and it's signed by both of them. It's it's wow. like just yeah, and it's like well, like a, it's like a numbered edition. There was like only fifty of them. Now, you, Alex, Art Crumb, is he related to Robert Crumb? Is that is that his brother? Or? Uh, Robert oh, Crumb, the uh, Art Crumb. Well, I know. I can tell you one thing. I don't know that much about Crumb, but I don't. I think he wasn't he the one who was almost like he was like uh, he wouldn't leave the house pretty much. He was pretty much. Oh, that was his brother. They, they they made a documentary about him and his two brothers. That was like, a was lie. Not, that was a lie. Because they know. said they said Art Crumb had died. Oh really? Yeah, in the documentary, yeah, and he wasn't really? dead. 
Oh, well, you okay. don't know with that book. Well, maybe it was his brother that they said was dead or something. No, it was it was his, R. Crumb. It was. He R. had that Crumb. brother that used to sit in the financial district in San Francisco, and he would like always be meditating, and he would he would like swallow a string, and he'd do all this weird shit. Oh yeah, like well that. they showed his brother in the documentary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He but, was weird. But maybe yeah. maybe was, they said his brother was dead, and he wasn't. One or the yeah. other. Anyway. But the, I bet you he didn't sign many things. I bet you somebody yeah. like that can write. If you can, you can authenticate the signature. You know what like, I got? You remember? You remember? Oh, I know it's real. I bought it at a yeah. at a. So you would sell auction. that, but you'd have to have it authenticated. Do you, you remember? Like, uh, there's a uh, name. There's a name. They know it's legit. Hold, hold on a second, yeah. Tony, Tony. Hold on. Anybody yeah. know the name John Stedman? No. Yeah, John? yeah. That's um, that's the guy that did the artwork for. Uh, Hunter, Hunter Thompson, Thompson for all yeah, his yeah. books. Those right, crazy yeah. looking. That you know the artwork I'm talking about, people. Yeah. Uh, and I had him sign a book of his drawings, and he signed it. And then you know how everything in his drawings had a splatter to them? He would, like, yeah. splatter? Uh -huh. He then took his pen and went, thwack, and I've got a splatter. Ooh. Wow. Oh. Yeah. And I've also got a Keith Herring poster here, signed by Keith Herring. <laughs> Uh, I had a coloring book that he signed for me. Yeah. Keith Aaron coloring book. Yeah. Uh, but this thing, I think, beats any of that. I also, oh, I also have a Who poster for Tommy with Ooh. signed by, uh, uh, with a, in the back, uh, a card uh, from uh, Pete Townsend, uh, Kit Lambert, and uh, who's the other guy who was their management, uh, to me, thanking me for helping them. And they gave me this this big poster from the Fillmore, which I loved, and then it was signed by the guy who did the poster. That's probably right. worth something, too. That's nice, too. Come on, Pete Townsend. Those are nice because they're to you. Yeah, I was going to say that, yeah. Yeah. I got Nancy Sinatra signed my cowboy boots at a concert at the uh, Fillmore. <laughs> really? Yeah. really? Yeah. I'll show uh, you. Cool. Boots. Find them. That's cool. These boots are made for walking. Huh? Yeah. yeah. Inciting. Uh, yeah. So we all have a little something that's worth something. And sometimes we have stuff that's worth something to us that isn't worth money. It's just worth memories. And I can't yeah, that's the thing. There's certain things that like my mother bought me as a kid that I won't get rid of. It's not like super expensive, but it's just the idea that I know she got that for me, so I won't sell it. <clears throat> wow. Yeah. Um, so anyway, uh, do you have those? Did you find the boots? Fuck it. No, they're, they're perfect. He gave up. Yeah. I can't find them. They're, they're somewhere. Uh -huh. There. I'll find them someday and I'll pull them out. Yeah, and and of course uh, Brian has a testing kit he loves and uh, keeps. Uh, <laughs> I'm by Trump. I was watching uh, the show with you guys when I was in Key Food. I was listening to this. It was good. Yeah, I, I had my own show for about a minute. I heard, yeah, Alex went away. I was like, I'm listening to Brian on the thing. I'm online. I, said, I didn't know what to say. I froze up. I'm like, uh. <laughs> what was it? What was this? Remember when you went and changed your shirt? Oh yeah, right. Right. Yeah, he gave me the show, and I just like well, started was, talking about I was born in Redwood City, and uh, I was wearing this shirt, and it was moraying like crazy. <laughs> I mean, you know, I should have known. A little that. Ted Baxter. It all started at a five thousand watt radio. Well, station. you know something, <laughs> I, that thing never used to moray. That thing never used to mor moray on Skype. It morays on Zoom for some reason. No moray filter. Yeah. So I mean, this is. This uh, shirt was looking like it was alive, you know. Uh, so, so yesterday when we were talking, there was about six PG&E trucks out front of my house, and about four thirty, mm -hmm. they started digging. This other company comes in with some big trucks, and they were digging right across the street. So, mm -hmm. there's a PG&E car right there, and the cones, mm -hmm. the red cones. Yeah. So there was a power outage the night before. And I guess that the house is up the street, and that's where the power unit is. So they had to dig that thing up last night. Those things were so loud, those trucks, all night. And yeah. they say this emergency case only, so they're kind of PG yeah. yeah, they're in an yeah. emergency case that blew up. So they just finished it a little while ago. Now they have another digger coming over here. These guys are going to be coming. I'm going to yell at them. But, yeah, so... Well, crazy. I, I, um, I, I, I got to tell you something. I, uh, I've been playing a new video game. Every mm -hmm. now and then, if I find a video game that looks like it'll be 
fun for me to play, the kind of thing I like to play, which are basically shoot 'em up games and adventure yeah. games. Yeah. Uh, and uh, like the Tomb Raider stuff I used to love, I eat that up constantly, even to this day. And uh, uh, this one company, which turned out a couple of games I really liked, has turned out a new one called The Last of Us Part Two. And it is the latest and the greatest in, in, in computer games. Because the plot includes, are you ready for this? Somebody growing pot and a bunch of people smoking joints. <laughs> this is in the game. Uh, uh, two, two women who are lesbians uh, lying around with each other. And one of these two girls happens to be Jewish, and they break into an, a, a synagogue in Seattle when Seattle's been done under by zombies and stuff. And uh, she teaches her about uh, her girlfriend about the Torah and about the Jewish religion and what we do on certain holidays. I mean, and I'm going, this is the weirdest game I've ever played in my life. I'm getting a lecture on Judaism in the middle of the whole goddamn thing. And it's got girl-on-girl -girl action. What Did else do you need? Plus, they're smoking joints. Did it come with a free dreidel? No, no. But I'm. I, it's 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 really. I think uh, you know. Games are changing. You know. Speaking of games, do you know what this is? is? Mario. What? what wait a minute. Wait a minute. Computer box. Speaking of games, you know what this is? Betrix. This is the boys' system. The what system? Oh, the oh. boy. My boy, oh, my son. I see, and he uses system. he uses that to play games, right? Yes, he does in his room, but it's here tonight. Well, you see, the uh, thing is, the thing is, those those, those discipline. Those I almost ripped it out of the wall. Yes, those, those game machines was are bad. Yeah, it was very bad. Yeah, yeah, but those 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 um, tricked out systems for playing games are pretty powerful. Yeah, you go on, on uh, YouTube and they actually have these guys that, you know, people take pictures of their systems. They have like three mm -hmm. screens and they have all this you know, LED stuff everywhere. Mm -hmm. Their systems like mounted on the wall, like art pieces. Yeah. They take pictures and they tell you all the stuff that you did to it. You send it into this guy and then he rates them and he posts them on YouTube. It's crazy. Well, oh, what I God. love is the way I've decided that I wanted this. Oh, look at the sunset there. Yeah. Um, no, uh, the other truck is coming up again. Hmm. Ah. That's uh, one of those trucks that pumps out the uh, the poop from those uh, construction cool. poopers. Yeah, like the construction guy was just staring at me right now. He has yeah, like a the honey pot. Glad you could uh, join us, folks, watching poop being sucked out of the <laughs> porta potties. No, it's not poop. That's they they dig and that thing sucks up all the dirt from there. I think mm. all the mud. And everything anyway, um, oh, yeah. um, uh, what was I going to say? I have suddenly the systems. Huh? You're talking That's about video games. Oh yeah. yeah. Uh, no, I mean they 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 really those some of those systems are really tricked out and very heavy. Um, but I don't I don't need them so. Uh, you know I just I I just is just a PlayStation, and then my hands are like trashed from playing for hours doing this. You know I hadn't haven't built up my uh, my playing fingers now my son used to get blisters from playing it when he was little i i got that at one point you know uh i just hate it when i get to a place in a game and i can't get past it you know and i find if i go away for a day or so sometimes a month i can get past it you know so uh, but it, I, and I've, I've finished very few games i mean i used to have in my old house Mm -hmm. Elevator Action, which was a stand-up uh, one uh, from the 80s. And then I also had a Mrs. Pac-Man uh, tabletop console. Ms. And, it, and if you push two buttons, it gave you Galaxic. Yeah, but that's, uh, not, that, you know, that's not what we're talking about here. What we're talking about is the sophistication <laughs> of games where the people in the game are, are completely real. You know, well, they're real. Good. You had little are little yellow things that ate the uh, the dots. Exactly. You know, it was. <laughs> we've come, we've come a long way. We, we've come a long reality. way since then. And this, by the way, this game cost me fifty nine bucks. This, they're not cheap. You should see some of the games on the virtual reality. 
Really? Unbelievable. Oh, my God. It's just crazy. Oh, John's got his back in the room and fighting. You're actually holding a lightsaber and you're actually fighting characters and they're coming at you. John, is that a Roomba? No, it's um, it's one of those electric unicycles. I just bought it, you know. A unicycle? An electric unicycle? Yeah. Yeah, you charge it and you, you ride it like this. You know, you put your feet here like that. That's amazing. You know, there's a. Oh yeah. Oh wow. One of my wow. one of my close friends is listening. I haven't to learned the show. how to ride it yet. I've had it for about a week and it's already busted all up because I can barely ride it. In San Francisco. I'm, San Francisco. I'm surprised you're still alive. Yeah. I know it's fucking it's crazy. <laughs> my my close friend David is listening to this show and I bought from him when I was about ten his old unicycle. He got one with an inflatable tire and he sold me for ten dollars. The uh, his un- old unicycle, which had a solid tire, and I used to ride that thing all over the place. Uh, unicycles are fun. Uh, these are hard to ride. They, they, they're, they're, you know, it's well, if you to have turn. to pedal, they're even harder. <laughs> you know? Yeah, I imagine once you learn how to use a unicycle, they're pretty easy to get up yeah. on and to yeah. do and yeah, so you on. Kind of just pedal back and then you go forward. But you know, I don't like it because it makes you look like a circus clown. <laughs> no, when you're ten, you know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I just bought Wasn't it. Isn't that just a big wheel? Yeah. So you've been working hard, Rob? Are they are they working you from home hard? Harder. Harder. A lot of well, yeah, because uh, you got a lot of free time. And so you're sitting, and I'm always on Zoom or some other thing, and they're talking at you. Now, have you gotten what they call, and this came up the other day, who brought it up? Zoom fatigue? Yeah, I understand what that is. I completely understand what it is. You feel like you just if you just sit there, and it's one way. You know, you they, they have all these long meetings, and you just sit there and listen, and after a while, you just zone yeah you can't help it you're not you're not used to that i i worked in radio i worked in television i worked in it very very you know it's sitting at a desk all day now you're sitting at a desk all day yeah i I think one of the problems that i'm having is that i'm going to work still and a lot of the people at work aren't going so i'm on zoom even at my in my office Mm -hmm. where at least and when you're in your office and everybody was there before covid you can go into a meeting room and you can bring your laptop and start to get some work done where all the bs is going on now it's it's now you're still stuck on zoom because the other people aren't in wow i was supposed to be in nashville at a convention and they canceled the convention and they had it a virtual Oh, and so uh, it's been going on for several days. Oh, I have God. not viewed one <laughs> thing it's that terrible. they had. It's, you know, I'm busy. Been, so it, unless I'm out of the store and away right. from the telephone and everything else, uh, I, I, you know, it's luckily they've recorded all of these things. Mm-hmm. And you can watch them later. Watching out, well. them at a later date. Yeah, I'll be able to view them. But here's here's what's interesting. It turns out now the Democrats are going to have a convention, but it's going to be virtual. Nobody will watch it either. Well, that doesn't matter. The Republicans are still holding their convention in Florida. Oh, boy. (laughs) Which is fine with me because there are going to be a lot of dead Republicans Republicans. around. Well, you know, uh, they were talking about having a Trump rally. uh, Was it in Alabama? recently uh and uh they're saying that it's not going to happen and the trump people uh lara trump said that uh it was never actually scheduled uh who trump lara laura yeah, the, the uh, eric trump's wife yeah the trump uh, nobody talked about okay go ahead <laughs> she's pretty hot though. i mean you know she, oh, she gives, no. gives melania yeah, well that melania. whole family buys pussy come on yeah <laughs> Anyway, no, she's very, very Somebody nice. has their vagina for sale. There's a Trump that will buy it. <laughs> That's not true. Well, anyway. What do you mean it's uh, not true? Yeah, I, and, I, and then. Uh, yeah, you're, like, I got to tell you, if uh, what's her name? Uh, mal- malaria. Uh, is <laughs> it, Malaria is there because he's so sexy. What about yeah. Kimberly Garfoyle, uh, who was married to. Uh, our governor out here, uh, what's yeah, his name? I got I got banned from Twitter because of her. Oh really? 
Yeah, I, I called her a fat Russian whore, and they banned. <laughs> She's not fat. <laughs> 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 and I don't think is she Russian? Good reason to get banned. Okay? You know, you, you went out you went out a winner. That's right. <laughs> what is that? Is that uh, is that uh, the governor's uh, wife or ex girlfriend? Or ex wife. Uh, right. She, she was the one yeah. he cheated on. Uh, oh, oh with uh Gavin Newsom. Yeah. She was just she was the DA of San Francisco when Gavin New Newsom was the mayor. I now don't know she, that she was she the DA or just in yeah. the DA's office. No, she was the DA, I think. I uh, no, I don't think so. No. No. Oh, okay. Uh, she was uh, an ADA. She uh, she she was just uh, an attorney in the DA's office. Oh, okay. Well, um, now she's hooked up with uh, 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 jo uh, Don Junior. Junior, Junior yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, good for her. Yeah, so she went from. Uh, the Pelosi side of the family to the Trump side of the family. Boy, they really, they, they must be, there, there are women out there who, for money, will do anything. Uh, Kimberly Garfoyle, uh, or what, exactly what her name is, but she has a lot of money. She comes from extremely Because she's probably been married people. a lot yeah, of times. Yeah, yeah. Uh, she grew no. up in San Francisco, and her, yeah. her dad had some kind of some kind of law of money from federal yeah. I think lucrative law. I mean, does malaria look like she's really happy being there? No, I I don't know anybody from that part of the world that looks happy. You know, the uh, Ukrainian girls and all of that. You ever you ever see these girls? They don't look happy. They're never happy. You know, I, you notice I've, that? I've been to yeah. Ukraine one time. Yeah. I, you... I went to uh, Yalta on a on a on a cruise cruise ship out of Istanbul back in the mm -hmm. late '90s. And we one of the stops was Yalta and then Odessa, but it, like we'd only like spend a day there, you know. But um, it was pretty cool. But you couldn't go there now, I don't think. Yep. So. You see any of the girls smiling? They all dress like hookers. Yeah, yeah, but they don't smile. <laughs> yeah, they. Well, you know, I'd walk up and talk to them. They'd look look at me like I was a Martian or something. You know? Have you been to the Ukraine, Phil? Hmm? Have you been to the Ukraine? Well, then, how do you know, know that they don't of, smile? How do you the know Russian they... women? Hey. <laughs> well, uh, oh, oh, you know? I know a Russian woman, and she smiles. Yeah. Yeah. One. Jack's wife. Yeah. Oh. No. I, I, in fact, I, I have a. I, I've always found uh, Russian women incredibly hot. Yeah. Well, the, you know, there's a lot of Russian women that contact men to date. On these dating sites, you, yeah, they want you to. How send do you them know money. that? How do you know that? I have friends that, <laughs> oh, okay. uh, that, that did that, you know. Uh, oh, okay. And and you hear stories, yeah. but you know, like on Match. dot com and some of these other dating sites. Can you get email? And some of these Russian women are gorgeous. But, but Russian uh, women are hot. Yeah, they they are. They just don't smile, and you, their interest is money. Everything is about money. Yeah. We have a we have a Russian scientist up in Bothell, Washington, that does mm -hmm. a lot of our our chemical our chemist stuff up there, and yeah. he's done a couple mini lectures, and he talks with that Russian accent. Yeah. I don't know what the hell he's talking about, but man, I believe every single word with that accent. Well, Charlie, if you don't, cut off your head and send you to Siberia. Charlie's been quiet tonight. Charlie, anything you want to talk about? We got a few minutes no, left just, here. I'm just huddling here in, in my my little cave here because it's too dangerous out there well you really got a stupid governor you know that yeah yeah absolutely Our hospitals are full they're having to make decisions on who they can put on ventilators and are not now yeah. they got their own I, death I, panels here in Texas. i thought that was in houston and austin i didn't know that that was where are you in dallas well, if if, if if they can't if they can't accommodate people in Houston and in Austin and places like that, in smaller towns they're not they don't have big hospitals there. You know they don't have that problem because Houston and Austin are Democratic strongholds in oh, Texas. If they get sick in a in a in a Republican area of Texas, they got plenty of hospital beds. Bullshit. Yeah. 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 Well, you know, we're just all the big cities are Democrat and, and, and Abbott won't let them have their own procedures. He overrides all the procedures made against the, the law. You throw the mayors in jail if they try to do anything to save people's lives. Well, next we'll be bringing in Russian hookers. Well, I mean, that that uh, <laughs> that uh, uh, governor of yours, Governor Wheely, I like to call him, um, 
because he has a wheelchair. See, it's a joke. Yeah. Um, he um, he really I has been. He too. really he's amazing. I mean, he was the first one to say this is all a hoax. It's a terrible thing. Ba, 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 ba. And then all of a sudden, when all it hits hard, oh, we need help, and we got to do this, and everybody should go indoors, and I suggest you wear a mask. I just well, don't he got like a $5 million settlement when he got hurt to put him in the wheelchair. And the first thing he did when he became governor was have a law passed where nobody could get more than $500,000 on any kind of lawsuit. Really? <laughs> so he got his and then shut it down for everybody else. Wow. But what do you think about Pence telling everybody to wear a mask? Do you know something? Pence is a fucking shithead. I'm going to tell you this right now. Do you know what he did on Sunday? I was watching him on Face the Nation, uh, uh, which is known in Italy as Faccia the Nation. Uh, anyway, he, I saw him on Face the Nation, and he's saying, you know, we have turned this whole thing around. For instance, in New York, we turned it around. Yeah, and I'm going, wait a minute. I'm going, wait a minute. What do you mean, we? I mean, you, why don't you just say, hey, you know, Mario Cuomo and the people of New York turned that whole thing around because Andrew. you didn't you didn't send any money up here. Andrew. Andrew. Yeah, Mario, uh, Cuomo Andrew. was begging for ventilators. He was begging for hospital beds. He was begging for temporary hospitals. And Trump got him all of those things, plus plus all the PPE that he was looking for. So they well, he's going to need it again. Donald Donald need it again. Trump, yeah, Donald but, but Trump they didn't. Did they turn it he around. didn't turn it around. He did not he turn it around. He did oh, not yeah. because Plus, number one, it turned out we didn't. It did, and even it turned even out we boy, didn't. Need, it turned out we didn't need that stuff, Phil. So how could he have turned it around with that stuff? Hey, because they thought they were going to need it. He supplied it when they said they were. But going that to need didn't it. turn it he around, Phil. Doesn't matter. And even even Cuomo said that Trump was very good to him, and, and he said he did the he, he did the right for. thing, and he he was very thankful of that. Yeah. But right now well, he's, he's calling him a doofus. Still, he's still a Russian whore. Trump? No. <laughs> yeah, he's a Russian whore. Yes. He's German. He's a Russian whore. He's Trump Putin did. puppet. No. Trump oh, is, oh okay. Putin's, you guys still Putin. believe that crap? Yeah, we no. do believe that still crap. Still true. God, you know. You and it's still some true. Of the, some of the Phil, time. Phil, hey, Phil, 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 Phil hey, you hey, guys Phil, cool. Phil, you don't believe that crap still? No, I yeah. don't believe that crap. And, you know, and New York Times uh, comes up with a lot of stuff. Now they're saying that he uh, was told about uh, New York Times has leaked uh, some sort of information about uh, uh, money being given by the Russians to the Taliban to kill American uh, troops. Yeah, yeah. How yeah. about and that's true, and New York Times, Washington Post, is not CNN, yeah, all, ten different organizations. And, and, but but the government uh, uh, who disseminates this information gets the information says that they can't verify it. So therefore, it didn't reach the level that needed to be given to Trump at that point. Bill, what they're saying oh, is that yeah. Trump got this information and didn't look at it. That's not true. That's that, not no, that is saying. true. That is all. true, yeah. Phil. And because it didn't reach the Because level. he's too lazy to read. In fact, I've been told that in order to understand some things they hand him, they have to draw cartoons. Bullet points. <laughs> Bullet points, he said. You but know, he, he knows he, now. So now he, he, so he knows now. He's been now. listening and, to uh, MSNBC and, uh, and, and, the, and the rest of these commie networks no. too, too long. He, he knows now, though, Phil. What is he going to do? He knows now. Well, What's he's he not going to overreact, and he's not going to send an atomic bomb down their throat. Shut up, Phil. There's the theme. There's the theme, Phil. Sorry, Phil. Sorry. Sorry. We can't. We want him to take action. We don't need a nuclear bomb. He needs to take some action yeah. and step up. Quick, if it's true. Quick, if shut it's up, Phil. John Larkin has see. the last word here. Yes, John. He's going to resign. He's going to resign. He's going to fire Pence and put uh, his daughter in as vice president and hope that she's going to pardon him. He is as he no resigns. quitter. He's <laughs> yeah. not like a Democrat. He's yeah. not a quitter. Yeah. Yeah. Six yeah. bankruptcies. How is he not a quitter? <laughs> Listen, he's not going to even quit once he you loses. Like free stuff, and Charlie. on that note, Hey Charlie, you hey, like hey, free stuff? Phil, time to, no Phil, bank everybody, bank shut up, <laughs> shut up. Okay. Uh, 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 yes, uh, uh, Howard, thank you for joining us. 
uh, in Hawaii, fifth night in a row. He's getting to be a regular. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Phil. Uh, thank you. Let me, let me, Charlie Wallace. Uh, thank you. Uh, let me see here. Who else do I have here? Tony, um, Phil, Rob. Who else? Anybody else here? On the uh, list? Ryan, John, and Sean. Wait a minute. Oh, yeah, yeah. And then we got... Uh, Mundy. What, Mundy Bowman? Who is that? Oh, is that you? Larkin. John Larkin. You should be ashamed of yourself. Anyway, every one of you, give a big wave goodbye. I'll wave back at you, and then I will fade to me, okay? And that's our Citizen panel for tonight. Boy, I sure love Zoom. It's just like I feel more relaxed with Zoom. I don't know why. Anyway, guess who's next? It's uh, the intersection uh, with uh, Jack Bishop. And tomorrow night, uh, right after the sports show at 9.30, then at 8.30, he goes to 9.30, and then we come back on at 10.30 uh, Eastern Daylight Time. Uh, same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody. Have a good night. Wear a mask and stay safe.